Where are the best places to buy vinyl online? Today, I am going to explore this question in depth. I'll share a few ups and downs of each and what to consider when buying from them. Whether you're new to collecting, looking to further your knowledge on your favorite longtime hobby, or just seeking out records to get somebody as a gift, you'll probably find something in this video for you. Hey fellow music nerds, it's Andy with the Fence Post Vinyl Channel. If you like this sort of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, then ring that little bell so you are notified when new videos go live. Let's begin. Discogs. Discogs is a specialized online marketplace for vinyl record enthusiasts and it comes with its own set of pros and cons. One of the standout advantages of using Discogs is the ability to search for and purchase very specific pressings of vinyl records. Discogs extensive database provides detailed information about various releases including catalog numbers, matrix codes, barcodes, and a slew of other minute differences between the specific pressings. This level of detail is particularly valuable to collectors who are really looking for that particular version of an album. It allows buyers to be incredibly precise in their search, ensuring they get the exact record they desire, so long as the seller has listed it properly. Another significant pro of using Discogs is the potential to save money by purchasing multiple items from one single seller. Many Discogs sellers will offer combined shipping discounts, which can significantly reduce shipping costs. Furthermore, Discogs offers a platform for both new and used vinyl, catering to a wide range of budgets and preferences. However, it is worth noting that some sellers on Discogs may charge relatively high shipping fees, so it's essential to carefully consider all costs when making a purchase. Alternatively, sellers might list their prices higher due to the excessive fees the platform charges when items sell. Once 8% it increased to 9% in 2023, and now that includes a cut taken from the shipping costs as well. And of course, you have payment processing fees from PayPal, which are around 30 cents per order, plus 2.9% roughly of the entire order as well. Additionally, sellers set their own pricing, which can sometimes result in overinflated prices. I know that I have a few of those on my seller account. Discogs, like other online marketplaces, involves a level of trust in the accuracy of listings and the condition of vinyl records. On Discogs, the most common issues arise in grading and in the listing of the record on the correct variant. Scammers have also become a growing issue, so as always, be aware of prices that may seem a little too good, especially from brand new sellers without ratings. One thing I also love about Discogs is it's not just for buying and selling records. You can actually catalog and track your entire collection on the platform. And as the prices have gone up, and my buying habits have gone down on in terms of the platform, it is still my go-to place to catalog, track, and check prices for vinyl. The next one is eBay. eBay is a popular online marketplace for buying and selling stuff. Unlike Amazon, which focuses entirely on new, eBay is a blend of new and used, and it's a great place to go grail hunting for vinyl records. You can even set up alerts for specific items. Like other places to buy vinyl online, it offers both advantages and disadvantages. One of the notable pros of using eBay is the auction format. Auctions mean you have the chance to get some pretty amazing deals depending on the item, being auctioned off. eBay allows buyers to potentially find vinyl records that might be challenging to find elsewhere, including some rare, hard to find bootlegs like one from Slow Dive, which I have covered right here on this channel. On the downside, eBay has seller fees that can drive prices up. Sellers on eBay are often charged various fees, including listing fees, final value fees, and additional charges for featured listings, not to mention payment processing fees through PayPal. 
same as discogs. Seasoned sellers will bake these fees into the prices of the items they list. Like discogs, the eBay marketplace is made up of sellers that range from individual collectors like myself trying to make room for vinyl they'd rather have in their collection, and small businesses that do this day in and day out for a profit. Next is Amazon. Amazon is perhaps the best known online shopping marketplace, at least here in the United States. What started as an online bookstore has grown into a behemoth where you can literally find anything. That said, it's become a popular platform for purchasing vinyl records as well, catering both to seasoned collectors and newcomers to the format. One of the primary advantages of shopping for vinyl on Amazon is the vastness of the selection it offers. With millions of products available, you can find a diverse range of vinyl records spanning different genres, eras, and artists. Amazon's extensive catalog ensures you're likely to find what you're looking for, with some limitations. Moreover, Amazon often allows third-party sellers to list their vinyl records, offering a marketplace for independent record shops and sellers. Amazon's user-friendly interface and customer reviews make it easy to research and select vinyl records. It includes reviews of the album and the purchase and the marketplace seller you're looking to buy from. Two other benefits include the shipping and the returns. On the shipping end, if you have a Prime account in the United States, you're going to get free shipping more often than not, and it typically arrives within a day or two, unless it's coming from a marketplace seller. And with the returns, if there's anything wrong with the product, Amazon makes it very easy to ship it back for a full refund or replacement. I cover all of this and some cons in my video, Should You Buy Vinyl from Amazon? Next is Bandcamp. Bandcamp has become a great place to go to get albums straight from the bands themselves or from smaller record labels. It's become a solid community, and during COVID, they began doing this special First Friday promotion where they don't take a cut from the sales that bands and labels get. So bands began focusing on that day to release new albums or do special things to drive additional sales. Like marketplaces, you pay shipping for each artist or label that you purchase from, unless you get multiple items from that one specific source. It's a great place to support your favorite artists directly, and they often have additional merch like shirts and posters and hats and bags and more. You may find slightly higher prices here depending on the band and the release, but you'll also have first dibs on some releases that might disappear pretty quickly due to scarcity and lack of quantity pressed. Next. Rough Trade. Rough Trade is a renowned record store with both physical locations and a massive online presence in both the US and the UK. It was originally formed in 1976 in London, England and expanded to New York City in the US at some point. It expanded two years after its original formation into a record label. You'll recognize that if you're a fan of The Smiths, Scritti Politti from the 1980s or from the 90s, and the 2000s, Jarvis Cocker, The Libertine, and The Strokes. One of the major pros of this record store is its strong reputation for promoting independent and alternative music. They've been pushing it for over 45 years, and they also have a vast in-house selection of limited edition Rough Trade exclusive pressings. Furthermore, Rough Trade occasionally hosts sales that feature popular and top indie artists alike, making it an excellent source for vinyl collectors looking to save a little bit of money while expanding their collections. Their post-Christmas year-end sale in particular is one I look forward to each and every year. One drawback is that Rough Trade's exclusives, which I love, are usually limited in quantity but still sometimes overpressed. This limited nature has sometimes been overhyped, making the regular price not as attractive as you might think in the long haul. Over time, they may increase a little in value, like other limited edition pressings, but it's really a toss-up. Still, I have plenty of great Rough Trade exclusives in my collection that are quite cool and that get regular spins on my turntable. Next, record labels. 
Another spot that I love to shop is online record shops of the record labels themselves. Getting items straight from the label often allows you to pick up some really cool things and they often have exclusives specific to the bands they release that you can only find direct from them or direct from the bands themselves. Sub Pop, for example, has their Loser editions. Polyvinyl has their Early Bird edition. These labels have branded their label exclusive, whereas others have not. On order right now is the new Slow Dive from Dead Oceans. This will be on gold opaque vinyl and it'll come with a bonus signed print by the band. Sadly, that pressing was delayed, so I don't have it to show you, but as soon as it arrives, I'll definitely be featuring that here on the channel. Furthermore, independent labels can provide a more personalized shopping experience. Many labels painstakingly curate their rosters, so it can be a great spot to explore new artists similar to the ones you already love on the label. This can lead to discovering new artists and albums that might not have grabbed your attention previously. The downside can be added shipping and handling costs as well as the extended wait times for items that have been delayed. Case in point, that new Slow Dive album has been out a few months. I don't have it. My order from Dead Oceans also included the new Kevin Morby album, More Photographs, which was delayed in production. Next up, local record stores online. Following your local record stores on social media platforms like Instagram can clue you into the latest items they stock on their shelves. And perusing their catalog on their websites and their Discog store can get you some pretty great records without the shipping. A lot of these spots will allow you to order online and then pick up in store. I did that with my 2022 reissue of the Smashing Pumpkins classic Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness double album, uh, which was on the 3LP unofficial trifold version. This one came from NTX Vinyl, a label that also has a pretty solid presence right here on YouTube. Curious? Check them out down in the description. Similarly, my copy of Black Spring by Lush is one that I've talked about here on the channel before. I stumbled upon it on Instagram uh, through Josie Records page right here in Dallas and immediately called the store to have them hold it for me. I still cannot believe I picked that up for just $12. Some stores are super niche, specializing in a variety of obscure subgenres and carrying stuff you just don't find anywhere else. One example is Jigsaw Records out of Portland, Oregon, which has a physical spot called My Vinyl Underground. Chris from this shop has been importing and selling obscure indie pop, twee, and lo-fi artists from labels overseas for nearly three decades. You can always leverage shops like his to pick up a few extra albums or singles for what you typically pay to import a loan album yourself from overseas. I gotta do it. Big box retailers and change. Here we go. Big box retail chains like Target, Walmart, and Tech, why not? I'll throw Urban Outfitters in there as well. These have become increasingly popular destinations for vinyl, especially the more mainstream appealing to younger collectors in particular, or on the other end, the older ones who are just kind of getting back into the hobby. The benefit here, contrary to my popular five reasons you should not start a vinyl collection video, is that it does attract new audiences to the hobby and we need it. We thrive on it, despite the driving up of costs. These spots regularly have exclusive pressings which typically come on some sort of colored vinyl. The flip side is that they can be overproduced, even the exclusives and overpriced. So before you go purchasing a copy here, check the variant on marketplaces like eBay and Discogs to see what the secondhand sales prices of these are. Uh, so you might be able to save some extra money if that's something that matters to you. Starting to round out the list, subscriptions and reissue labels. Subscription services like Vinyl Me Please and Bandbox and frankly, so many others these days can offer excitement and curiosity and discovery. It's kind of like going to a record store and just picking up something random. 
They tend to feature exclusive pressings on colored vinyl, supplemental packaging items, and an assortment of other bonuses. Vinyl Me Please, sometimes referred to as VMP, has something similar to an OBI strip, kind of like that one. Bandbox comes with a magazine that goes in depth into the artist feature. While some are strictly subscription, others allow you to purchase one-offs. Both Bandbox and VMP are an example of that. It can be cool and there's some excitement about getting something random and exclusive in a subscription. Subscribers can receive albums they might not have chosen on their own. It's like having a dedicated music curator who selects records based on your preferences and introduces you to some hidden gems or overlooked classics. However, the lack of choice can be a drawback with limited control over what you actually receive each month. This is why I haven't stepped into the vinyl subscription craze. I mean, I'm also pretty full up. Aside from a few sub-pop singles clubs in the past, of course. The cost of these subscription services can add up over time, especially if you end up with records you just don't really enjoy. So, what did I miss? What are some of your favorite spots online to shop for records? Let me know down in the comments. And uh, coming up soon on my channel is a holiday gift guide for the vinyl lover, as well as my best of lists for 2023. So stay tuned for those, AKA subscribe and ring that little notification bell. Next, should the true vinyl collector shop from the behemoth online retailer, Amazon? Check out this video right here where I dig deeper into that ultimate question and share my thoughts. I'm Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.